it starts supercharging my secular themes, which are technology and crypto. Both benefit from debasement of currency, the, the added liquidity. But in addition, there is this exponential age of technology that's playing out. And the adoption effects of that, of which probably AI is the fastest, but it may not be. Who knows what else is coming? There's a lot coming. I'd left Goldman. I was running a hedge fund. I'd left the hedge fund, opted out of the rat race, moved to Spain. I was writing macroeconomic research, Global Macro Investor, which I still write. And I was writing and predicted the financial, uh, the financial crisis and then the European crisis that came just after. I'm living in Spain. The banks are defaulting. They're going bust. They're taking people's money out of their accounts and saying, it's not your money anymore. I'm seeing what happened at Lehman Brothers where nobody knows who owns what when a bank goes under. And I'm like, this is a huge problem. So I thought, maybe I can try and create the world's safest bank. So I went around the world with a bunch of family offices trying to start a bank. And we got stopped by the Dallas Fed. They said, you can't do a non-fractional reserve bank because you'll take all the deposits from the system. So we're just not going to allow it. But it's a good idea. I'm like, so a friend of mine, and I think you probably know him as well, Emil Woods and Chad Cascarilla. Sure. Yeah. They were Global Macro Investor subscribers. They said, take a look at Bitcoin. I'd kind of hit my radar screen in like 2011, but 2012, I, I went down the rabbit hole and realized actually this was an asset that you can own outside of the financial system that has value and the blockchain rails could, everything in finance could be built upon them. That was my first idea. And so I wrote the first ever macro strategy piece. Raul Pal discusses the interplay between technology, crypto, and macroeconomic trends. He highlights how both technology and cryptocurrencies benefit from currency debasement and added liquidity, particularly in an era of exponential technological advancements. Pal reflects on his past experiences in finance and his journey into the crypto space, emphasizing the potential of Bitcoin and blockchain technology to reshape the financial landscape. At a macro level, Pal elucidates the challenges posed by global debt and the need for a reliable system to ensure ownership rights amidst financial uncertainties. He points out the growing adoption of cryptocurrencies driven by concerns over currency devaluation and the search for store of value assets. Pal underscores the significance of crypto in addressing systemic issues and providing investment opportunities accessible to a global audience. Furthermore, Pal predicts a bullish outlook for cryptocurrencies amid a backdrop of increasing government debt, anticipated stimulus measures, and declining purchasing power of fiat currencies. He sees crypto as a unique investment vehicle offering potential for substantial wealth creation particularly for retail investors participating in a globally integrated financial infrastructure. Pal concludes by emphasizing the pivotal role of liquidity in driving crypto markets, positioning them as a compelling investment destination in uncertain economic times. Ever feel like you're wasting your money on things that don't really matter? Stop. You don't have time. Don't miss out on this 2025 bull run. Educate yourself now. Don't spend $12.50 on junk. Educate yourself on how to be successful in crypto using our Crypto Cheat Guide. Unlock the secrets of crypto and make smarter investments today. Visit the website now on the link in the description for your exclusive copy. Start your journey to crypto success today. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. About Bitcoin, I think ever written back in March 2013. And I bought Bitcoin at $200. And then I've been in it ever since. And even when we started Real Vision, which is the kind of financial knowledge platform, the first video we ever did in 2014 had Bitcoin in it. We've taken as many people as possible on this journey to say, listen, crypto is really important. You just don't understand it yet. But everyone will find their way in, in how important it's going to be for a future financial system. So I'm going to give two levels. The first, the very, very big picture level is the world is awash with debt. Global debt is 400% of global GDP. It, these are bananas numbers. So what does that mean? We talk about debt a lot. What it means really is the collateral, the assets, the back of the system have lots and lots of people claiming on them. So if anything goes wrong, you get a fraction of your money back. Also, we're learning that banks are now bailing in creditors. So you find that the issue in the leverage world is you actually don't think, whatever you think you own, you don't actually own. 
it can be taken away from you. That's the real issue we're trying to solve here at a very top level, is how do I keep that recorded ownership of what is mine and what is yours, and don't pollute them because some third party uses them for their own means. And then before you know it, nobody knows anything. But the other big change was obviously the internet. So if, when I got into this journey, the internet was around, but it wasn't the scale of what it is now. We're now creating these global nation states that are digital, that operate outside of the US or the UK or Europe. And they need a system of, as we get more digital, each day our lives get more digital. Digital assets now have value. This digital infrastructure is much more efficient at moving stuff around and recording the ownership. So if we now go to this system where in the United States you buy a house and it gets stamped and go to a notary and then it get recorded in a registrar, this can be instantaneous, everywhere and nowhere, and always verifiable. So it, it's really the operating system for the digital age. And without it, it kind of doesn't function. It's all a bit clunky. But with this, it's instantaneous settlement, recorded ownership and transfer of everything. Firstly, people understand that the system is broken and they're looking for answers. Some people choose gold. Some people look, choose Bitcoin. People use different ways of, of getting around this. They can feel it. It's all around you. You can see it with populism. You can see it with just how markets react. So there's this feeling that I need to find an answer here. A lot of that is being driven by, we know there's all this debt and I'm scared of it. Okay, that's good. The other thing is, what is the answer that the central banks chose or the governments? It was create more money. So you've got this macro backdrop of debt and this fear. So that's driving adoption. And then people are finding new use cases like NFTs for smart contract stuff. That's creating a technology adoption like anything, like the internet was. And it happens to be the fastest adoption of any technology the world has ever seen, except AI, which has been faster. But we're also finding that, that the central banks are debasing currency. They're making our money less valuable. So we're looking for things that are a store of value over time. That's not necessarily against goods inflation. It's against the thing that Governments and central banks always do. They clip the corners off the coins until you've got no coin left. That's a way of taxing you without you knowing. And that's to pay the debts that the government has because of the aging population and all the debts out there. So those two things are driving the movement of crypto. So the crypto price is based off those two issues. The adoption of the technology, as everybody's starting to build on this new tech stack, and because it solves a lot of problems... And then it's the thing that the central banks are doing are devaluing your currency all the time. That creates a super mega trend within this. Now, it as a space is growing on average, including the bear markets, which are brutal, as we all know, it's growing at 100% a year as a space. So there are 516 million wallets as of end of last year, active wallets. If it's growing at 100%, by the end of this year, it's a billion. Then the end of the year after, it's two billion. Because So the numbers are vast as people are adopting it. Now, the difference here between this and the internet or the mobile phone is we were users of the internet and mobile phone, but we didn't make money out of it unless you happen to own the right shares. But nobody could own the infrastructure of the internet. Different parts were. Here, you can actually own the thing by owning a token. So we're getting to participate in something that has never happened for humanity, which is a global infrastructure being built by everybody around the world at the same time, and we can own a fraction of it. So this is, at an investor level, why, why it now matters to everybody, this is the first global homogenous investment product the world has ever seen that can operate like this. So... It's the same product. Bitcoin is Bitcoin in India as it is in Nigeria, as it is in London, as it is in Hawaii. It's the same thing. Indian investors can't take, trade Tesla shares. Yes, they can trade gold, but they don't have access to it because you have to go to the, to the 
to the store and buy gold jewelry and you've lost a lot of the the markup within that but here anybody can get a wallet because it's on the internet and you can send money home to your mother in the philippines from the united states instantaneously and by just owning one of the tokens an ethereum token or whatever it is you've got a share of it so if more people adopt it you get richer this is like one of the greatest schemes the world has ever seen in creating mass wealth not for wall street but for retail who got to front run all of this and create a new system that solves the problem of what's the investment uh, that what the central banks and governments are doing and solves the problem of an over indebted society i mean that's how big it is so let's look at those two component parts main parts one was the debt cycle that's not changing in fact the governments are issuing more debt to pay the interest on the previous debt and that's pushed interest rates up and it's made it even harder so the debt keeps going up okay so we have to solve that one and it's just accelerating because we're now having to pay the interest on the covid um bond issuance debt issuance so it, it's going vertical right now so we know they're incentivized to con continue this path on the other side is, are they going to debase the currency? Well, they've been doing the opposite. In 2022, why crypto had such a bear market, as most things did, is they were taking liquidity out because there was inflation. So here we are where, if we look at trueflation, which is an on-blockchain measure of inflation, it's at like 1.4%. So inflation's come down. It's not the boogeyman anymore. Growth, interest rates are too high for that kind of environment at 5.5%. So the probability is... They're going to lower interest rates. We're seeing China in an economic mess. They've got a full debt deflation going on. Same issues, aging population, high debts. Everything's blowing up. They're likely to stimulate further. The Europeans are likely to end up stimulating further. And eventually the US will stimulate more as well. Because they need to get growth to pay for these interest costs. So that is what lies ahead. And then we've got the other sweet spot in the middle of this which is politicians hand out candy during elections. And the candy that everybody wants is stimulus. So they will hand out stimulus, which needs to be paid for. It either ends up on the Fed balance sheet or some other liquidity measure to allow the government to fund itself. So what we've got is a high probability that our money is going to be worth less. Asset prices are going to rise, but our wages won't, which is the big problem. So we're, our future selves are getting poorer because we can't afford as many assets. And we've got this massive wave of debts to be refinanced. So that's normally a very positive backdrop for crypto. Lots of liquidity. And liquidity is what drives all markets. But crypto is the super massive black hole that sucks in so much capital when this happens. In Raul Pal's discussion, viewers are prompted to consider the intersection between technological advancements and the burgeoning realm of cryptocurrencies, particularly in light of their shared benefits amidst currency debasement and the exponential growth of technology. Pal also invites reflection on the macroeconomic landscape, highlighting the influence of global debt levels and currency devaluation on the adoption and value proposition of cryptocurrencies. Through these insights, viewers are encouraged to contemplate the implications for the future of finance and how investors can strategically navigate these complex macroeconomic trends within the digital asset space. For more Daily Dose Crypto News, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.